ABC's Wide World of Entertainment, the most exciting new idea in late night television. A refreshing change of shows every week. ABC's Wide World of Entertainment. Great late night entertainment coming your way in January on ABC. The B-52s continue to fall over North Vietnam. We'll have an update on tonight's losses and the story of four supermarket shoppers at this moment caught up in a chase through Georgia. A quarter of a million dollar fire in Los Angeles tonight and we'll have a film report and Harold Green reports on the end of a very long radio career. Also tonight, a special report from Henry Alfaro on drug overdoses and Bobby tells his big secret next on Eyewitness News. Tomorrow at 6.30, there's cartoon fun for the whole family in The Man Called Flintstone. It's the 6.30 movie. On Channel 7, KABC-TV, Los Angeles. This is Eyewitness News, the 11 o'clock report. It admits to only one being lost from enemy action and eight in crashes. Flying at 30,000 feet, there was time for the electronic jamming devices on the 52s to confuse the radar-guided SAMs. But now all that's changed, as have U.S. tactics when the 52s resumed bombing three days ago. Instead of small groups of B-52s, up to 100 bombers have been in each raid. The pause in the bombing gave Hanoi time to get more SAM rockets and launchers, which the Russians have shipped in by rail through China, bypassing the U.S. blockade. The North Vietnamese have improved their detection methods and come up with new tactics, some of which seem to have caught U.S. planners by surprise. The evidence isn't all clear as yet, but it appears that many more SAMs than ever before were in place and ready for the bombing resumption. Up until now, the bombers could confuse the SAMs with radar jamming. The big change now appears to be that the North Vietnamese are turning off their radar and salvo launching scores of SAMs at a time. A barometric device explodes the warhead at the altitude the B-52s fly at. And when enough of the 300-pound SAM warheads go off in a formation of planes, the shrapnel and blast waves can cause destructive damage. An Air Force panel is now meeting to devise new emergency tactics to counter the new SAM menace. While Air Force planners expected bigger losses with larger raids, no one expected it would be this high, and something is going to be done about it. Jules Bergman, ABC News. Hanoi claims that yesterday's air raid by American warplanes damaged a prisoner of war camp, resulting in some injuries for Americans. With that in mind, we met with John Naismith in South San Gabriel, he being the father of a POW, and he gave us his feelings about this latest development. Well, my reaction is that uh, after those boys have rotted there for one, two, seven, eight years, they deserve better than that. I think that this bombing has got to be an irresponsible act on the part of our government. And Mr. Naismith, I understand that you recently sent a telegram to the President of the United States. I wonder if you could tell us briefly what you said in that telegram. I sent this telegram uh, last Saturday. Of course, that's before the bombing started. And uh, I wished the President a Merry Christmas and his family and reminded him that it would not be a Merry Christmas for many of the boys in captivity or their families, or their wives. I asked him if in his devotion to the big picture, trying to solve the whole problem, if he was losing sight of the immediate picture and losing sight of the humanities of the boys who are prisoners, I wound this up by saying, is a perfect agreement worth the life of one more American? Communist delegates in Paris today bitterly denounced what they termed terror bombing of the Hanoi area, and the communists promptly walked out of the peace talks. They warned that some American POWs risk being killed by the American bombing raids because they contend some of the POW camps are located in the target areas. American officials said they were not surprised by the communist walkout of the peace talks today. None of the chief negotiators from either side had attended the session. The next meeting is tentatively scheduled for December the 20th. Hello. A real treat yeah, for me, too, Barney. When Frank Hemingway airs his final newscast tomorrow on KABC Radio, it will be the end of an era. 
Hemingway has brought the news, both good and bad, to audiences in Los Angeles for over 32 years. He's known affectionately as the Dean of California Broadcast Journalist. America's three Apollo 17 astronauts have settled down to three days of debriefing at the Houston Space Center before starting a holiday week with their families. It was 1937 when Frank joined the ranks of Walter Winchell, Drew Pearson, and Gabriel Heater. World War II was on the horizon when he hired on at KMPC Radio. Later, it was over to KHJ, on the side doing news for the Mutual and Blue Network, which was later to be called NBC. Frank says he'll miss it, but it's time to call it quits. His fondest memories are those of the early radio giants. He used to look forward to seeing and uh, listening to these men. We couldn't see them in those days, but listening to them, and they all had uh, characteristic qualities in their delivery and so on. As you remember, Heater was, ah, oh, there's good news tonight. And, Winchell with his uh, recommendation north of South America and all ships that come to sea is going to press flash, you know, things like that. Well, I think in future years, when they speak about the great newsmen, I think the name Frank Hemingway will be right up there with the best of them. Well, I wish you. you well. Thank you very kindly. You're very kind. I know I'm, all, uh, I'm going to miss all the people I've talked to for many years, and I'm, I'm going to miss all the wonderful people I've worked with. That was the important thing. A great comradeship. Frank Hemingway has won a multitude of... Fred Anderson reports. The charge was a serious one, affecting the emotions of millions of teenage fans. And record star Bobby Sherman called a news conference here in the presidential suite of the Sheraton Universal to answer them. Sherman said, yes, it was true. He has not only been married since a year ago last September, a little boy named Christopher was born to he and his wife Patty just a week ago yesterday. It really comes down to a very simple point, which is, uh, is in a way selfish because I, both Patty and I wanted a family very much. But when we decided to get married, uh, the doctor had some reservations and some concern about Patty having a successful pregnancy. So at that point when we got married and we both wanted to have children, uh, we decided that uh, probably the public attention if we brought it forth would be too much excitement and pressure for her and, uh, and for possibly children and what have you. And we didn't want to be too, we didn't want to jump the gun with all kinds of things and have it kind of a letdown. Following the news conference, little Christopher made his debut with mom and dad in the bedroom of the presidential suite. Very normal. I want to be my view also. Bobby Sherman says the fans won't mind at all. Not only that he's married, but that he has a child. I know my kids were pretty upset when they found out he was married some time ago. I hope they can take this all right. This is Fred Anderson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, reporting. It's a lot of flash bulbs for one young baby. Terry Phillips tells us about tonight's hockey action and gives us all the other sports in just a moment. 30 seconds. All right, a commercial. I can do take it. one. I can do it. Give the newest Kodak present pocket instamat to camera. Tucks away inside a pocket, it's a perfect gift for everyone. Open up and drop the film in, ready to save a Christmas fun. Little camera takes big pictures, fa la 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 Give a Kodak Pocket Instamatic camera. They started less than $28. La made it. One out of every three people suffer some symptoms of hemorrhoids, but fortunately, in many cases, the first applications of Preparation H give prompt, temporary relief from pain of hemorrhoidal tissues. And Preparation H actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues due to inflammation. Yes, tests by several leading doctors prove this true in many cases. There's no other formula like Preparation H, and it needs no prescription. Preparation H. We're still small enough to know who you are here at Western Federal Savings. <laughs> Maybe 102186356 to Social Security, but I'm high, Mr. Grumbach, here at Western Fed. Western Fed, Western Fed. I may be. Have you any further identification cashing a check somewhere? But I'm, oh, Mrs. Moresby, here at Western Fed. It's a nice relationship, me and Western Fed. I'm Edgar Bergen. 
And I know that staying small these days can be efficient, and getting to know someone can be good business. Why not try us on for size here at Western Fed? Charlie is. Here you are, Charlie. It's the best investment I ever made with the allowance you give me, Bernie. Western Fed, Western Fed, it could be a nice relationship, you and Western Fed. It's going to be next after George Fishbeck. Hot or cold tomorrow after this. Good evening. You know who I am. I'd like to tell you about Universal Studios Tour. They have sets, stuntmen, action, special effects, well, we're now leaving stars, the entering our back lot. This is known as Colonial Street. You do meet the strangest people on the tour. This is Purr, the first power detangler, invented to stop split ends before they split. Purr's double row of wide teeth move back and forth, gently separating the individual hairs so it glides right through tangles. Tugging with a comb can split ends. Wet hair or dry, with Purr, it's different. There's no tugging that can split ends. The more you use it, the more split ends you'll end. Purr, the power detangler. If you didn't know Taster's Choice was the freeze-dried kind that came from a jar, you'd swear it was the ground roast kind that came from a can. Taster's Choice looks, smells, and tastes so much like ground roast that if you didn't know the difference, you couldn't tell the difference. To prove how good GAF color print film is, try to find the real live me hiding among these Christmas snapshots. It's going to be difficult because with GAF color print film, the color you see is the color you get. Now, which is a picture and which is the real me? Here I am, GAF color print film. The color you see is the color you get. Jeremiah Johnson made his way into the mountains. I know who you are. You're the same dumb pilgrim I've been hearing for 20 days and smelling for three. Robert Redford as Jeremiah Johnson. Written on, forgetting all the troubles that he knew. <sighs> Are you all right? Sure, sure, I got a fine horse under me. A mountain man's a lonely man and he leaves a lot behind. He was a man the Indians prayed to and cursed and tried to kill. Redford as Jeremiah Johnson. Rated PG. Robert Redford as Jeremiah Johnson starts tomorrow. Avco Center Cinema on... <laughs> Being a pirate isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's hard in a guy's face. Always fighting nature's elements, the king's navy, a woman's scorn. So I fight back with high seas. The conditioning aftershave. It feels richer. Helps protect my face. Soothes and smooths it. With high seas, piracy. Wondering, wondering, what will you give? Give for the holiday. Come to the Fabergé, my friend. Come to the Fabergé. Visit the counter of your favorite store. Visit the great Something new. Give Aphrodisia a tigress, would you? Give a golden ball of Kikum and for the men. Give the great smell of fruit. Just right for that special day. Come to the Fabergé, my friend. Come to the Fabergé, my friend. Come to the Fabergé.
When the job is done, this guy will be ready to dig into something mighty good to eat. How do you handle a hungry man, the manhandlers? One of the manhandlers is Campbell's Vegetable Beef. Gets a man-sized supper off to a good hot start. Mmm, -hmm, good. The manhandlers. Well, good day, sir. Something in a dress boot, perhaps? Well, I'm really looking for gifts. Well, uh, here's one of Carl's smartest style. Mm, okay, I'll take uh, 86,000 of those. How about that one? That's fatty, isn't it? 83,000 pairs for them and one size 11 for me. They'll be dynamite with my striped bells. Carl shoes bring back walking. Maybe you'd better get down to Carl's before your Christmas shoes are gone. <laughs>